In this video, not only are we going to get to the bottom of all this sticky addressing we've been talking about for a couple of videos but haven't seen yet, but I also have some bonus information for you that's kind of related to port security and it can really help you out in the real world as well as the exam. But right now, we're taking a look at our secure address table on Switch 1. It's got one address that it has learned. It's the dynamic address from host 1. We recognize that address by now. And right now, the only port security commands I have running on the switch are on that port, and I've enabled port security, and that was it. So there are no other configs, no static addresses, no nothing. The reason I wanted to go back to this is to show you, or remind you, because you actually did see it earlier, is that if that interface gets shut down or the switch is reset, what's going to happen to our dynamic entries? They're going to be lost. And maybe we don't want that. Maybe we want them to remain in the table if the port is shut down for any reason, error disabled or otherwise, or if we just reload the switch. Well, that's what sticky addressing is all about. What happens there is the dynamic addresses stick around, if you will, on a reload or a reset of that port. Let's go ahead and put that into action and port by port deal just like everything else we've done here with port security and as a reminder it's MAC address but instead of putting a static entry in we are configuring dynamic secure addresses as sticky and that's the only option so now we'll do a no shut go ahead and open up we'll go over to one and send those pings again And we don't have it in there yet. Let's go back and send another set of pings. I thought I might open that a little soon. And there we go. We see the secure MAC address, but note this time the type is secure sticky. That's all there is to it. I know that seems kind of anticlimactic after mentioning it in what seems like every single one of the previous three videos. But that's what sticky addressing is about. And now if I shut that port down... And we'll wait for it to finish cooking this time. There we go. If we do a show port security address, notice the dynamically learned address is still in the table. And if I reload the switch right now, exact same thing. So pretty good stuff there. Let's go ahead and reopen that port while I'm going to look at another command here. We're going to get away from port security, exclusively port security, that is. A couple of videos back, may have just been the last one, but I think it was a couple of videos back. I mentioned to you that while it's great to run show interface, FAST01 or whichever interface it is, on the host to see the error disabled message, that port security is hardly the only event that will cause an error disabled message. And we're going to see a couple of those in action, not in action, but we'll see them right now. Just a few, huh? This is the error disable recovery command and the options, as you may have quickly seen, are cause and interval. I wanted to see cause first of all because these are, a, this is a partial list of events, there are the rest of them. All of these things can cause a port to go into error disabled state. And a couple of these we're going to see in the course, some of them you may never work with, but the one that we're really interested in right now is that P-Secure violation. Now you have to be careful with this command because what it does, it enables automatic recovery from an error disable state. And you can define which events you want to have this automatic recovery from. And there is an all option at the very top there where you can say, okay, I want the ports to recover from an error disable status for, that's caused for any reason. Now again, you have to be careful with this because first it's convenient, you know, it sounds great. Hey. You know, if somebody triggers an error disabled port at 2 o'clock in the morning, I don't have to tell that in or drive in or anything to see what's going on because I can have it automatically reset. Well, that's great, but you may not want it automatically reset, say, in port security. You know, if you may have the feeling that if this port is uh, put into error disabled state, I want it to stay there until I personally get there and reset it. The other issue is here, of course, what are you doing kind of out of order here? You're not resolving the issue that actually caused the error disable state. 
you're just resetting the port. So if the same thing happens after this reset, then it's going to go into error disabled state again. And you just kind of get into a vicious circle. Having said all that, this command does have its uses. I'm not just bad mouthing it. It does have its uses. You just have to be careful with it. And we're going to go ahead and actually get started with this right now. I want you to see this in action. And I'm not going to go with all here. I'm just going to go with error disable, I believe is the one. No, p-secure violation. And that is right in the middle of all this. So let me highlight it for you. P-Secure, enable timer to recover from P-Secure violation. So we know what that is. We've seen that on the messaging. And that's it. Notice also this is a global command. It's a globally configured command. You're not enabling it at the interface level. Now, the default recovery for this is 300 seconds. And you know why I'm being cute and saying 300 seconds instead of just saying five minutes, right? Because you know the interval is going to be in seconds when I say that. Now, five-minute timeout, uh, reset timer, that's perfectly fine. If you want to change that, you want to go with interval. And again, it's in seconds. And you'll notice the minimum is 30 seconds. They're not going to let you have a recovery in five seconds. So we will go with 30 here. And what I'm going to do right now is pause the video, set up a situation that would trigger an error disabled port, and then let it recover. And I want you to see the messaging that we get. So hang in there, and I'll be right back. All right, we're rolling again. And what I did, I'll show you the actual config, but it's, very, it's exactly what we did earlier. I set the single secure MAC address on port 01 to be AAA, BBBB, CCCC. And we know darn well that wasn't going to work. But I sent a ping in from router 1, which did what we saw earlier. It's triggered the P-Secure violation. Now, I put the timestamps back on so we could see about how many seconds the reset is going to take. And here's a message we haven't seen before, error recovery and attempting to recover from p-secure violation this is a result of the error recovery that we configured and there it is so it's attempting to come out of error disabled state and you can see it was about 30 seconds and you can see now that we've got frames coming in from host one <laughs> that are triggering port security again and this is what i was talking about about where you have to be careful with this command because it was okay until we had some more traffic come in from host one, which triggered the violation again. And now in about another 30 seconds, it's going to recover or try to recover again. So let's let it do that. And then I'll shut the port and we'll do a couple of show commands that I want to share with you. Do, 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 do. And there we go. Error recovery right on time, about 30 seconds later. Now I'll just shut it. Now we're going to get a whole lot of messages. So we'll go through this one more time. I want you to see it, but I wanted to see it live as well. And a lot going on here, but you can see that the port went into error disabled state at 2343. And about 30 seconds later, which is about what we said, it's never going to be exact, but about 30 seconds later, the error recovery starts. And there it is from the P-Secure violation. And the port is up and up physically and logically. And just a few seconds later, we have some more traffic come in from host one that triggered the whole situation again. And that's what I was talking about. You got to be careful with this because, of course, it's probably just going to keep on happening if that host stays connected. And here's your error recovery again about 30 seconds later. And that's all there is to it. So let me show you a couple of show commands here. Actually, just one with error disable recovery. And you can run this after you configure it too. You don't have to wait for it to actually be triggered. But you can see it's going to give you the full list of error disabled reasons. And P-Secure violation is the only one that we had enabled. And at the very bottom, timer enabled 30 seconds. And right now, interfaces that will be enabled in the next timeout, there are none listed because we shut the port down. Let's go ahead and reopen that port. Do, 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 do. We'll see if that one shows up there yet. Not yet. It's going to have to reset again. But again, show error, disable recovery. That's going to show you your entire list, what you've enabled, what you haven't. It is enabled globally. It can be a wonderful tool. You just got to be careful with it and make sure that later, if not sooner, you're resolving the issue and then you can worry about resetting the port. Here's our 
PSecure violation again. And you can see now at the bottom, you know, interfaces that will be enabled at the next time out. Well, there's your interface, there's your error reason, your error disable reason, and the seconds left before it's going to try a reset again. So it's going to be, again, pretty soon eight seconds away. So by the time I wrap this up, it's going to be trying. But again, it's a great command under the right circumstances. Just be careful with it. And it's good stuff to know for the exam as well. That is enough port security goodness for right now. But we've got plenty of security coming up next.